Sure, we actually date back to the 1860s. We got our start in Atlanta, Georgia. When a father and son after the Civil War, Paul Jones Sr. and Paul Jones Jr. had opened a small grocery store and small distribution warehouse. And during this time, Paul Jr. was courting a young lady uh, in Atlanta. And uh, he also was uh, about to purchase a small distillery that had just begun making a corn whiskey near Atlanta. And after a period of his courtship, he decided to ask for her hand in marriage. And they agreed the evening of an upcoming grand ball that they were to attend, that if she were to accept his proposal of marriage, that she would signify so that evening by wearing a corsage of four red roses on her gown. And if her answer were no, she would wear three roses. She wore the four roses, and in honor of the occasion, the love and the passion, he named the whiskey he was making Four Roses Bourbon. Or Four Roses, it wasn't yet bourbon. In 1884, Georgia was one of the first states in the U.S. to enact a statewide prohibition, and anyone working in the beverage alcohol business in any capacity had to leave the state or change professions. Paul Sr. had died, and Paul Jones Jr. moved his company, the Paul Jones Company, to Kentucky, opened his first office on Main Street in Louisville, Kentucky, which is now a historic district in Louisville, uh, a number of buildings for a uh, two-block area, named Whiskey Row. We, all, we have the documentation of when he moved to Kentucky, uh, his first office, when he moved from that office to another one. And in 1888, Paul Jr. trademarked the name Four Roses. Continue to grow the brand and Paul Jr. passed away in 1895 and the operation of the Paul Jones Company was turned over to one of his nephews, Lawrence Jones continue growing the company and when prohibition was enacted on January 16, 1919, there were six bourbon distilleries that had been permitted by the U.S. government to continue selling bourbon, not producing bourbon, but selling based on their existing barrel inventories for medicinal purpose. One of those six distilleries was the Frankfurt Distilling Company and the Paul Jones Company purchased the Frankfurt Distilling Company and from in that matter four roses was continued to be sold throughout the prohibition era of uh, 13 years and even during those 13 years the people that were sick enough were allowed to buy per prescription the prescriptions were issued to doctors by the u.s government serial numbered like a dollar bill and a uh, person that was sick enough to purchase one bottle and all bottle sizes were in the pint size purchase one pint every 10 days to, and it was a cure I suppose to all illnesses and I think it's uh, well documented there were more sick people during those 13 years than in any time in our history pr prior to prohibition and subsequent to prohibition. When prohibition was repealed on December 5th 1933 Four Roses bourbon quickly became the number one selling bourbon in the U.S. and stayed that way through the 30s through the 40s and most of the 50s. And I think most important was the fact that it was the most recognized name in all distilled spirits, despite the fact that Seagram was a giant in the industry because Seagram had been, been putting away Canadian whiskeys for more than six years when Prohibition was repealed. And they had the barrel inventory to flood the U.S. with uh, whiskeys uh, when no other distillery had an inventory of whiskey. They became the overnight giant, yet Four Roses was the most recognized name in the business. And for that reason, the Seagram Company purchased the entire Frankfurt Distilling Company in 1943, primarily to get the Four Roses Bourbon name. And, uh, oops, sorry. <laughs> uh, Seagram wanted the Four Roses Bourbon name. And uh, it was in 1945 that Seagram, which was a blend of whiskey company, and Seagram's founder, Sam Brofman, was a champion of blend of whiskeys. Seagram introduced a new blend of whiskey to add to their vast portfolio of brands and named it Four Roses Premium. Instead of bourbon under our crest of our uh, logo Four Roses, it said premium. And where our bourbon is a Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey under premium, it said a blend of 100% American whiskeys. That brand continued to grow. Uh, through the 40s and 50s and by the mid to late 50s it was selling more than a quarter of a million cases in the U.S. Our bourbon had reached this peak of performance uh, 
and sales in the mid to late 50s at near 1.3 million cases. And at the end of the 50s, Sam Brofman made a decision to focus domestically on the blend of whiskeys and pulled the number one selling bourbon off the U.S. market. Four Roses Bourbon disappeared from the U.S. In, by 1960. Now, four, uh, Seagram kept four other bourbons that they had in their inventory, but none were as well known as the Four Roses brand, of course. And the primary reason people are always asking, how could a company sell or remove from the market the number one selling brand, the money, the power, and the ego to want all the top shelf brands to be associated with Seagram, having the Seagram names on it, and uh, Four Roses uh, bourbon was removed from the market for that reason because it was so well recognized. And then uh, from that point on, Seagram focused on their blend of whiskeys. From 1960 up until the time we came back uh, to the U.S., we had become uh, immediately after uh, going into international brands, uh, international markets, we became the number one selling brand and are today in many or most European countries, Western European countries and Southern European countries, with the number one selling bourbon in Japan. Yet, unfortunately, the people that remember the Four Roses name, unfortunately, after being off the market for more than 40 years, remember the blend of whiskey, which was a good blend of whiskey when it was introduced by Seagram. But Seagram had a history of building a brand to reach where the marketing research team felt like it reached the peak of performance without adding a lot of money to achieve very little results, Seagram would pull 100% of the support from the brand and let it die away based on the name it had earned during its uh, peak of performance. That happened in the early 60s. When it happened, the Four Roses blend of whiskey and became a spirit blend versus a 100% whiskey uh, brand. And it became a cheap, inexpensive, bottom shelf, blend of whiskey which totally destroyed the renowned name that the Four Roses bourbon once had in the industry. I would had an ongoing debate with year, for years with Seagram marketing personnel trying to encourage them to just make the blend of whiskey disappear from their brands, let us bring our bourbon back home and unfortunately it took Seagram going out of the beverage alcohol business in December 2001 for us to come back to the U.S. The first decision we made was that we would reintroduce Four Roses Bourbon to the U.S. And uh, in mid-2002, we hired an agency to go around the country and we recalled every bottle of blended whiskey we could find and destroyed it, making plans to introduce our bourbon. We knew we couldn't focus on our yellow label, which is the number one selling brand in Europe, uh, much of Europe and Japan because of the negative image and the perception that it would, we were once again bringing out the blend of whiskey. So we introduced our single barrel bourbon in September 2004 and we decided we would focus on our premium bourbon brands and not put any money behind our yellow label and hoping that people would begin to realize hey, the yellow label is a bourbon, not the blend of whiskey and the sales would uh, turn around on it also, which has happened over the years. It's uh, Yellow Label is our fastest growing brand. We introduced our single barrel again in September 2004. Back then, Whiskey Magazine, the largest, uh, perhaps, uh, I think the largest trade magazine in the world, that's out of London, was conducting their best of the best whiskey, uh, whiskeys of the world competition categories of Scotch whiskey, Irish whiskey, Japanese whiskeys, and all types of American whiskeys, including straight rye whiskeys, Canadian blend of whiskeys, all American whiskeys. It was a two-year process. Uh, in place, they would have competition, hold competitions in places like Tokyo, London, Paris, Glasgow. And uh, we decided to get into the contest, enter the contest with our single barrel, even though it was very late in the competition, we felt like we didn't have an opportunity to win anything, but if we had some writers that were on some of the tasting panels, and they're all blind taste tests, and at the end of the day, when the people that were judging the whiskeys would find out uh, the brands that they had judged, and if some people had like sample number five out of 10 in front of them, and it turned out to be four rows of single barrel, they would write about it. That would help jumpstart our return to the U.S.
that's what we did. Uh, it took us two years to become the number one selling single barrel in Kentucky. And when we came back to the U.S., we only had the barrel inventory to go into one market. We chose Kentucky a little for of the reasons it are, it's our home. The major reason is that it's the most competitive bourbon market in the world. We wanted to see how we would stand up against the now well-established brands. So I think in two years, by our single barrel becoming the number one selling single barrel in Kentucky, we were we felt like we were on our way. We were building our barrel inventories, and in September 2006, we introduced our small batch bourbon to fill the gap between our yellow label and our single barrel. We distilled and aged four recipe or ten recipes. We used four of them for small batch. We wanted to begin to uh, let consumers know the difference in four roses with the multiple recipes that we use for our bourbon. And that's why we uh, wanted a small batch focusing on four recipes. Our yellow label uses all ten. Single barrel, of course, is one recipe. Last year, uh, 2011, our sales in the U.S. were up 42 percent over 2010 and the first seven months of this year versus an equivalent period last year in 2011, we're up 59%. So we're on our way, we're in uh, 47 states now, we're not in Alaska, we're about ready to go in Alaska, we're getting close to going into Hawaii, not there yet, and hopefully we'll soon be in New Mexico, that's the only three states we're not in as of right now.